and since interesting times often mean economically trying times, those times aren't especially unusual or even trying for actors. But to continue the debate initiated by Jeff Kelso at the first live blog on Friday, we do live in a time of more and more government intervention in formerly unimagined areas, even banking. Woohoo! And yes, such intervention has been with us in the theatre for some time, and it appears to bring its own peculiar drawbacks and advantages. Advantages, I can feel Jeff's toes curl, and I understand that impulse. Well, in my experience, small independent producers cannot, unfortunately, be truly financially viable in 2009 without government assistance. Indeed, sadly, it seems neither can many large-scale independent producers be likewise viable. There are so many rising costs and obligations to be met, and the difficulties of hiring a venue, insurance, and the cost of marketing have to be considered. Considerations which too often compromise the artistic process and place the artistic personnel as the last people on the list to be paid. Jeff gave a feisty, funny, incisive, and impassioned speech at the live blog on Friday. Yes, as he points out, the bureaucrats do exist because of the artists and the creative process. And yet, the bureaucrats are often the only people likely to receive regular profit from the theatre industry. The evidence suggests that over time, the amount of professional theatre output in Perth has shrunk considerably. I can't help but see that evidence when I look at the number of productions a year that the two major theatre companies of two decades ago were able to mount, twice the number, at least, of the present, today, of the present day. And those productions frequently had considerably larger casts than today, and yet the related government departments were noticeably smaller. It is an enduring conundrum. However, there are, as always, many factors to consider, not the least being shifts of focus in audiences. And it seems unlikely that we'll return to life as it was 20 years ago. Change may be in the wind, since we do live in such interesting times, but it's difficult to forecast what changes those will be. In the meantime, of course, arts bureaucrats do presumably love the arts. They strive to support them and create good opportunities for artists. I'm certain that's so. Sadly, though, as we know, the intricacies of government and government speak instantly have the effect of hampering the artists. And as Jeff points out, the quagmire of documentation is stifling. Grant applications are stringent and harrowing enough and I, like Jeff, can no longer spend any more precious time responding to surveys and consultative processes. For me, please, quaff I, never more. But how complex is life? Because I must confess that I have in many ways benefited from bureaucratic systems in government. And interestingly, there was less diversity in Perth's theatre 20 years ago, witness the Blue Room itself and the opportunities now that exist for small, very small, independent companies to be auspiced by the larger ones. And these opportunities probably arose out of necessity because the core theatre activities of the major companies shrank. And seldom do the activities of tiny independent companies provide people with anything approaching a livelihood, but they have given a few artists a bit more autonomy and the chance to try out their ideas. Well, let's hope, of course, that these artists don't suffer burnout as they struggle, often grossly underpaid, to cope with the burdens of administration alongside the creative process. It has taken many in my generation a while to come to terms with the fact that artists may be required to be business savvy. I think younger members of the profession deal with that much better and have been much quicker to adapt. So where have I benefited? Well, on a personal level, the tiny company, AgeLink Theatre Inc., that I, apart from being a freelance artist and part of, has been able to access one-off grants to mount major productions. And such a process was, as far as I remember, out of reach for a company like AgeLink 20 years ago. On the downside, the effort required in producing one-off events without ongoing support and the difficulties of trying to sustain an audience when you were lurching from one project to another, dependent largely on the energy and enthusiasm of a few dedicated and often unpaid personnel, just can't be underestimated. That aforementioned burnout does indeed happen. However, I'm glad to have been able to achieve it and to have been able to tour, even, an independent venture nationally thanks to state and federal funding for an effective touring system. And I don't remember that happening for independent companies 20 years ago. 
and the institution of the Australian Business and the Arts Foundation, allowing small companies to access private and industry donors, made possible our tiny company's tour to London last year. Still not a very financially rewarding tour, I must confess, but an artistically rewarding opportunity nonetheless, because only Western Australian artists living and working in such extreme isolation as we do can really appreciate the importance of standing up and being counted on the world stage. So I have benefited in some ways from the changes to the face of Perth Theatre, even though I confess I often look back with a nostalgia to the way we were. But boy, it's exhausting being an artist in this town. It often feels like uphill work, and there's no possibility of a quick trajectory. But I suppose I wasn't. I was expecting not to starve in a garret for my art, but certainly to experience some struggle. And why then do we do it? Hard to explain. It's so difficult to define the process of acting, let alone the compulsion to do it. So at the most basic level, I've come to the conclusion that the artistic impulse is in fact the human one. We want to make our contribution in any way, small or large, to the best of our abilities. For actors and theatre makers, the compulsion is to observe, comment and interpret. Or maybe it's just to fantasise and escape. In any case, we do have fun doing it. And I empathise with Jeff's blog in many ways, but I'm glad to say that the bureaucrats don't, in fact, have quite all the aces, as Jeff suggests. We, the artists, are the ones who are remembered. Great theatre, like other artistic processes, does make a lasting impact on the minds of the audience. It does enrich all our lives, and I doubt if paper shuffling has the same effect. But each to the best of our abilities.